Anyway, who wants to see the inside of my nose? I have a great story. Gather around. This is this is a sort of different story. This is um a little bit um lighter. I got recommended this video on YouTube just randomly. Like I don't even watch anything like this. I have no clue why I got recommended this video. So I got recommended randomly this video. How my sleep almost killed me by big muscle South African apartheid man, right? I mean, that's not, not fair. I don't know if he's a racist, but he's a South African, so I'm going to assume that he's a racist. He's a white South African. You, I mean, is, is he even South African? He sounds like it, so he's a racist. My lack of sleep nearly killed. No, no, I'm sorry if you watch this. Please don't send your followers after me. So I watched this video. Me. I slept eight hours a night, but spent my days with extreme fatigue. I went to different doctors and I was misdiagnosed five times. And the first time I got some sort of clarification was when I went to see a psychiatrist with extreme depression and anxiety. He took one look at me and said, you sleep deprived. I can give you all the medicine in the world, but it's pissing against the wind and you have to treat the root cause, which is sleep deprivation. So it turns out I had obstructive sleep apnea. It was mostly caused by a severely deviated septum in my nose, but my weight also played a big role in that. I went to a sleep clinic and they wired me up like a scientific experiment. And my sleep study showed that I stopped breathing between 30 to 50 times per hour. My body didn't allow me to get into deep sleep because it would permanently wake me up gasping for air. I was getting around 30 minutes of restful sleep per night. How can any person survive on that? It really hit me when I googled sleep apnea symptoms because I experienced every single thing on that list. And what made it worse? If left untreated could result in heart attack or stroke. I went for surgery, fixed my nose and everything changed for me. Most heavier guys experience this and even because of genetics it could happen to this is not because of steroids. This can happen to anyone. So I watched this video, right? And I was like, hey, that, sound, that sounds sort of like me. I can't sleep. And I was like, can I breathe through my nose? And I was like, holy shit, wait, I can't breathe through my nose, right? You know, you're not, that, you're not supposed, that's, the sound's not supposed to be there. You're not supposed to have a sound when you breathe through your nose, okay? Unless it's blocked temporarily. That's not supposed to be there. I only learned that from watching this video. I went to my doctor. And I was like, hey, I think I might have something wrong with my nose, right? And like, I was like, and he's like, okay. I'm like, you know, felt like my breathing in and out and such. And he's, and he's like, yeah, there's very clearly something wrong with your nose breathing. So it gave me a referral to um, uh, tomography. And um, so I went, I went to the tomography thing and they gave me the results. And I don't have what this guy had exactly, but it's very similar. I mean... Disclaimer here, this is self-diagnosis. I haven't actually shown these results to a doctor yet. So this is um, my, the inside of my head. That's my nose. So you can see here, I don't have a deviation, really. Um, maybe slightly. Yeah, the right, I think it is deviated. Like the right, the right nostril is clearly bigger. Is that the right or is it the left? Well, the, the one on the right side is what we see. Right is clearly bigger, right? But this thing here, this is called um, concha bellosa. And this is like another thing that you can clearly see from the images. That thing there, right? I have that. It's like right there. There was one that was pointing to it. Yeah, here. Well, clearly not as severe. So it's like, I haven't actually shown these to a doctor yet, but it's pretty clear to me that I have some sort of obstruction in my nose that makes it more difficult to breathe, especially at night, which um, is a big deal because when you're at night, if you can't breathe through your nose, you basically can't sleep. So that's basically why I couldn't sleep, right? Now, I haven't had anything done yet, obviously. If I come back with like a Chad nose, it's because I had a plastic surgery done at the exact same time that, that I got my nose fixed, and you'll know. But like, I've already started treating it. Like, nasal spray reduces swelling, which opens up the nose a little bit and helps you breathe at night. And I've also started taking melatonin pills, which I never took before. And it's like, wow, I can sleep at normal times now. And I can breathe through my nose when I go to bed. Still obviously imperfect, obviously not good, but pretty crazy how much of a difference that made. I honestly thought that like there was just something like innately wrong with me. And I was like, I don't need to sleep anyway, whatever. I can function just fine. And now like for the last two weeks, I've been getting up at fucking 8 a.m. and going to bed at like 11, 12. And it's like completely changed everything all of a sudden. I think the reason why I have the obstruction in the first place is probably because um, I had a bicycle accident and um, I think I might have hit my nose during that accident without noticing it, which would have caused that sort of thing to happen. Noses are extremely fragile. So yeah, that's my, my story. YouTube recommendations made me think about something that I never thought about before. I might have sleep apnea. I don't think that guy had sleep apnea because from what I've read, actual sleep apnea, you can't cure with just a surgery. You need to have a machine, which, you, which helps to breathe, you to breathe at night. 
but he definitely had a problem with his, with his nose. There's something useful to talk, talk about. If you have problems with your nose, <laughs> like, like my nose isn't that noisy, right? But it should have like the same level of noise as breathing through your mouth. And you can clearly hear there's some sort of obstruction. It's n night and day. Like you should only hear the wind. You shouldn't hear like some, like as if you're struggling to breathe. If you have that, you should go to the doctor and try to get something done about it. Unless you're in the USA because it'll cost you $10,000 and just die. But anywhere else, go to the doctor. You might have, at, at the very least, a nose obstruction, at worst, sleep apnea. And doing something about it, even just temporarily, probably change your life. It's already changed mine much better. I have so much more energy now. It's like everything just overnight just completely fucking changed for me. Like the first night that I woke up, I went to bed at like 1 and woke up at 8. It was like... Like, not just woke up at 8, like, I went to bed at 1, I slept 7 hours straight, woke up at 8, and I couldn't go back to sleep. Like, I didn't feel like going back to sleep, I felt like waking up immediately. That, that hadn't been the case for me for like at least 2 years now. So it's a huge fucking deal. Definitely, if you have even an inkling of suspicion of this, get yourself checked out. Get a referral, get a tomography or a radiography, whatever you call it, get your nose checked out. Get a, a sleep study is, um costs a lot more but if you can get one of those it's also a great option you know if you if, if you have trouble sleeping even if you don't particularly have symptoms of sleep apnea or these sort of symptoms get a sleep study done because there's something wrong with you and it's probably treatable like if you go to a doctor and, and you're like hey doc especially if you go to a specialist generally doctors in argentina are so much better than in other countries so i can't sp i think in us they like to blow you off to try to make more money off you but here that's like go to the doctor it's like hey doc i I haven't been able to breathe through my nose for as long as I can remember. And I'm like, okay. He's like, okay. He puts his hands like on my lungs and he's like, can you breathe in and out through your nose? And he's like, yeah, that, there's something wrong there. Definitely. Like you have like 50% of, of the capacity of what you're supposed to be breathing through there. It's very obvious. Immediately gives me a referral to get the study done. It doesn't even try to milk more money from me. So the quad, like just the direction of healthcare is very different. And like, they don't even tell you where to go. Like they don't have like a network of of referrals, right? You have to find, you have to go to wherever you want. They don't tell you which, which provider to go to. They don't give you a specialist name. They just give you a medical order and it's like, find one yourself. So there's not like this, this network of incentives between doctors to send, to like refer their clients or anything though. They do try, some of them do try, but it's not like you have to go to this guy.